Officers of the Ghana Police Service informed four families in Takradi, in the Western region of Ghana, that DNA tests conducted on some human remains discovered in the course of police investigations into the disappearance of four missing girls are turned positive as the remains of the girls. The Ghana Police Service has regret, therefore informed the families that the remains are those of Ruth Abaka, Priscilla Blessing Dean Two, Ruth Lap Quason, and Priscilla Crancher. Investigations now established that the girls were victims of a serial kidnapping and murdering syndicate that operated in the Takrabi area. While for various reasons we are unsuccessful in obtaining and acting on accurate actionable intelligence in good time to enable us to rescue the girls, we believe that the arrest of the corporates has effectively thwarted the ability of this syndicate to have to have continued with further kidnappings and murders. Now, I'll proceed to look at the sequence of disappearances of the girls. Miss Abekan went missing the 29th day of July, 2018. The second victim, Miss Priscilla Bintun, went missing on the 15th day of August, 2018. Then on the 4th of December, 2018, Miss Ruth Love Quasi, the third girl, was reported missing. The disappearance of the fourth victim, Miss Priscilla Mantibia Kranchi, was on 21st December 2018. On the 22nd day of December 2018, one day after the disappearance of Mantibia, the police was able to track the number through which some ransom had been paid. This led to the arrest of suspect Samuel Udwe to West to assist with the investigation. Samuel Wills later escaped from police custody on the 30th of December 2018, but was rearrested three days later in an uncompleted building at the Crawford, which is a suburb of Takradi. He has been convicted for escaping from lawful custody and brought to the CID, and he was brought to the CID headquarters where upon interrogation he admitted that he Together with suspects John Oji and John Shika, kidnapped the young girls and sent them by road to a location in Nigeria known as Baby Factory in Anambra State. He however denied knowledge of the whereabouts of Ruth Abekan. The evaluation of this confession and other intelligence reports from Nigeria on the location and modus operandi of this baby factory culminated in an assessment by the investigation team at this stage that they had a fair idea of the location of the girls and that it would be possible to bring them home. Between April and July 2019, several surveillance operations were mounted in Onicha, Oka, Port Harcourt, and Calabar in Nigeria. These were locations where suspects Samuel Odua took wills emphatically mentioned at different times as places where the girls were sent and directed investigation teams to with the hope of tracing and rescuing the girls. Upon collaboration with other intelligence and investigative agencies across West Africa, the second suspect, John Oji, was tracked and arrested at the floor border on 4 June 2019. During interrogation, John Oji admitted to knowing Samuel but denied knowledge of any kidnapping. John claimed that he had met Samuel to collect some monies owed him after someone had sent him to Tamale in 2017 to bring him a money ritual box. The two suspects were put together for questioning. And while Samuel insisted that John knew where the girls were, John, on the other hand, maintained that his denial, maintained his denial of any involvement in the kidnapping of the girls. Two officials for the Nigerian National Agency for the Protection of Traffic Persons came to Ghana on 17 June 2019 to assist the police with the investigations. They interrogated both Samuel and Oji at the CID headquarters. These further interrogations did not yield any new actionable information. Effort to locate the girls in Nigeria also yielded no results by July 31, 2019. 
The Nigeria list, ladies and gentlemen, were assessed to have grown cold and unreliable as of that date. Then on the second day of August 2019, the investigation team was informed by the National Agency for the Pro Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons in Nigeria that the third suspect, one Shika Inoidim, had been arrested in Abuja, in Nigeria. In a video interrogation of the suspects, Samuel Wells identified suspect Shika Inoidim John to the police as one of the accomplices. Suspect Shika also apparently knowing suspect Wills willingly spoke with him with regard to the kidnap bills and in the process Wills asked Shika about the whereabouts of the kidnap victims. In a confrontational exchange between the suspects, Udwatu Wills insisted that it was suspect Shika and one Mama Soboma who came to Ghana for the girls and sent them to Nigeria and that suspect Shika knew the whereabouts of the victims. South however, denied this allegation. The Ghana Police Service is grateful to our sister security agencies in Ghana and the South region for their support. Re-examination of associated locations in Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, on the second day of August 2019, the investigation team decided to re-examine all available facts associated with the case. Sister Sam Samuel Udwatuk's residence in Takradi was searched. A detailed search of all previously unexamined areas, including a septic tank, resulted in the discovery of bacteria suspected to be human hair. The subsequent draining of fluids from the tank revealed three human hairs at the bottom of the tank. In addition, bones suspected to be human remains were retrieved from the septic tank, together with two sets of earrings and fingernails with artificial teeth. Samuel Udwatu was questioned about the discoveries, but he provided no coherent responses. On 5th August 2019, a joint team of crime scene investigators and forensic lab experts for the police headquarters, led by the Western Regional Commander, together with Samuel Udwatu, visited the vicinity of the uncompleted residence where he had been rearrested. A water well was discovered around 7 p.m. With the benefit of lessons from the 2nd August discoveries, the Ghana National Fire Service was engaged to empty the well. This led to the discovery of a woman's car, which was fresher than the three found in the septic tanks. Additionally, parts of a dress found earlier in the other house on 2nd August 2019 was also uncovered at this location. Again, Samuel Uduatu provided no coherent answers to questioning at the scene. However, the dress found was identified by my Tibia's father as belonging to his 15-year-old daughter. The remains discovered were subjected to DNA tests, the results of which have now been communicated to the families. The Ghana Police Service expresses its condolences to the families. The police administration commends the investigation team for successfully arresting the perpetrators of these heinous crimes. While we wish we had actionable intelligence in good time to have rescued the girls alive, the painstaking investigations nonetheless have contributed to ensuring that the persons responsible are brought before the law and prevented from carrying out other similar crimes in the future. The intelligence work that led to the arrest of other suspects in foreign jurisdictions is also commendable. The police administration would like to encourage the general public to endeavor to always report suspected crimes to the police immediately they happen. The first 48 hours makes a critical difference in the investigation of cases. We further encourage the media to continue to play a bridging role between the police and the public and support the police in getting the public as partners to provide information to assist police work. The Ghana Police Service remains committed to protecting and serving the Ghanaian public and will at all times, ensure that the safety of the public is preserved. The suspects will, process, will be processed for court upon completion of the case dockets and advised from the Office of the Attorney General.